Hi, everybody. We're going to wait for some people to jump on. Where is... Hello, Kiki. Did you get all the ingredients for your sweet corn pudding? Hello, Denise. Clearly, we have some subscribers because there are 11 people, 12 people who jumped on, which means you guys are subscribed and you have notifications turned on. So thank you for that. I appreciate that so much. Oh, another Denise. Hello, Denise Wilkerson. Okay. I think, I think I'm ready. Mostly ready anyway. First of all, Full set syndrome completed. I have every color of the Gina K glitz glitter gel now, which makes me happy. Now I have to figure out how to, you know, incorporate them into everyday life. <laughs> okay. And yes, I did get the Hero Arts kit. Thank you. Um, here it is. I didn't really make a big to do about it because I didn't order any extras. The only thing I liked out of here was this door die, really. But uh, we'll see what I come up with with that. I'm going to combine it with last month's Hero Arts kit. Hello, Irene. Okay. So I posted a video a few days ago showing me um, reusing some scrap pieces of foil. So I wanted to show you guys some of those, right? But there was a lot of questions on, um, you know, what were some of the supplies I was using? And people were emailing me questions, which is fine. Hi, Patsy from Oklahoma. That's where Blake Shelton's from. <laughs> um, so... I decided what better way than to have a live Q&A for you guys on foiling. So I wrote down six of the most frequent problems. And I do have my good old Scotch laminator out. Um, you can see it's the Scotch TL901. I don't think they make this anymore. Um, but I have it on five milliliters. The green button is not lit up yet. It's been plugged in for maybe 10 minutes. So it's not heated up yet completely hello Canada um, and then I have my mini mink over here okay so I'm gonna try to give as best as I can examples of of issues and such and try to compare laminator versus mink when it comes to some of these issues if I can all right so the first thing I'm going to talk about while these guys are heating up, and boy, does it smell in here because these rollers are getting hot. It is normal to smell like a burning plastic smell. That's just how these machines smell. Let me move that light out of the way. Okay, so that is normal. Um, the first topic, which I talk about a lot, is the difference between the foil. So for those of you that are going to save this video, <laughs> Kiki says that's what it smells like when I cook. Um, for those of you that are going to save this video, and I'm going to give you guys a second. If someone, if you guys want to grab a notepad and a pen, go do that now because I, I'm going to give you some education here on the different kinds of foils. Hi, Pamela from Texas. Please send some of that Texas warmth up here, although I heard it's going to be a little chilly down there too. All right, so you guys let me know when you have your pen and pencils handy. 
there are two types of foils. So foil one, I'm going to call toner foil or mink foil. Hi, Chow. Okay, toner foil or mink foil. What falls into that category? These are the original mink foils. They come in many different colors and sizes. So I'll go over that too, Sarah. So remind me later, Sarah. Um, so mink foil. Um, where's my box of foil? Oh, right next to me, uh, Nance. Okay. Mink foil. Gina K foils. I have a few. Okay. Um, Brutus Monroe foil is also produced by Deco foil, which is Gina K. So this is Deco foil. Deco foil. Okay. Um, some more mink foil. More Deco foil. Yes. I have a small obsession with foil. <laughs> okay. These are Anna Griffin foils that came with my mini me. Some more Heidi Swap foil. Some more Gina K foil. Anna Griffin foil. And I believe, I do not have the Glaminator. I did look into it, and I will talk to you guys about that in a few. This is more Anna Griffin foil that came with the mink machine. Um, and I don't have any Brutus Monroe foil, but the Brutus Monroe foil is the same as Deco foil. Um, and, of course, my favorite is Creative Vision Stamps Foil, which there's like 25 colors, so they have their own basket, the Creative Vision Stamps Foil. So these are all mink foil or slash toner foil. So Creative Vision Stamps Foil, Deco Foil, Gina K Foil, Heidi Swap Foil, American Crafts Foil, um, all of those companies, Anna Griffin Foil, even the Glaminator Anna Griffin Foil, um, Gina K, Mink, all of these are what's called toner foil, mink foil. So you need to understand the difference between the foils, okay? Toner foil does not have an adhesive built into it. This foil is just foil. So you need to use this foil with some kind of adhesive. The number one adhesive that we are using with this is toner. Okay, so toner is the black stuff that comes out of the laser printer. You guys have all seen it. So those toner designs are sold by several companies. And what they allow you to do is heat up those toner designs through either a laminator, a glaminator, or a mink machine. And the toner black images of toner get sticky. What it is is micro granules of plastic. These micro granules of plastic get sticky and hold the foil. And once the foil cools down, then it sticks to those toner areas. Okay. So for example, what companies make toner foils? Well, you have my favorite foilables from Creative Vision Stamps. So you can get tags, you can get sentiments, you can get um, background designs. Anything you want in a design, as long as it's printed on high quality paper with good toner, you will be able to foil it. You can also print your own if you have a laser printer, it has to be a laser printer. It cannot be an inkjet printer. Laser printer puts those little microscopic powder granules of toner down, and that's what sticks. Gina K has foil mates, which is here. 
Creative Vision Stamps has foilables. I just ordered some from Brutus Monroe. They are from Deco Foil. And then, of course, you have some of the mink sheets as well. These are all toner sheets. Okay. The difference between everything I just told you and hot foils and the hot foil companies are Gemini, which they have two types. They have paper foil and they have multi-surface foil. So these all say paper, 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 paper. This one says multi-surface. The multi-surface foil will work on leather, will work on canvas. It has a brown core. The paper foil is generally for paper. It has a white core. Okay, so that is the difference with the Gemini. You can use the multi-surface foil on paper. So you can go that way. Okay, so you have Gemini. You have Spellbinders Glimmer. Okay, Spellbinders Glimmer. Notice how the boxes look very similar. The size of the foils are very similar. You have uh, Couture Creations, which is Go Press and Foil which is basically the same company as Glimmer. We so have Go Press and Foil. And again, these all come in these tiny little six inch, I think these are five or six inch rolls, five inch rolls, okay? All of these companies are hot foil. We also have the brand new to the game, Foil Quill Foil, okay? So these are brand new, these are hot foils. And we also have the foil quill comes in full size rolls now too. So do not get your foil quill foil mixed up with your Heidi Swap Mink foil. They look the same. Two different types of foil. This is toner foil. This is hot foil. And it says on here, heat activated foil. So toner foil, heat activated foil, and then another company, um, you can pick these up at Hobby Lobby, it's four packs. Um, another company, which some of you may or may not have heard, I've done a few videos on them, is the Toto Company. Toto is a big UK company. They have a giant machine. It's a, a die cutting, foiling, embossing machine all in one. It's a huge machine. And so we have this company, Toto, which is also hot foil company okay this foil all of the foils i just showed you with gemini with glimmer with go press and foil with toto all of these foils are hot foils these foils have an adhesive built in already okay these do not need a toner sheet they do not need an adhesive to get them to stick they will stick to paper, fabric, um, canvas, leather. This is why the popularity of the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill has boomed because now you can buy a hot foil pen, which I did not invest in. You can buy a hot foil pen and you can hot foil candles. You can hot foil ornaments. You can hot foil glasses. Anything you can put your hands on, you can freestyle and hot foil now, okay? So hot foil, remember, has adhesive built into it. And the rest of these, the other foils that are out there, the most common foils out on the market are toner foils or mink foils. Okay, so mistake number one is not knowing what kind of foil to buy or what kind of foil to use for the project that you have in mind. So yeah, I, I have a slight obsession with foils. I have large baskets Full of foils but I separate my foils based on types of foil so those were my hot foil baskets my mink and my toner foil baskets are in a separate container okay so that's number one is to know what kind of the correct the foil is so for those of you that say can I use my mink foil in 
my hot foiling machine? The answer is no. Your mink foil does not have adhesive on it. Your hot foiling machine is going to heat up the foil. And you're going to expect it to stick, and it's not going to stick. Okay? Um, <laughs> the toner foils are the most popular foils. I will say they are my favorites. They are easiest to use because you can print your own designs with a laser printer. You can use, which I showed the other day, your own solid toner sheets, and you can die cut with them. You can reuse the foil. You can buy several different foilable designs now. Thank you, Kiki. Um, so the mink foil, in my opinion, is the easiest. It's the easiest to find product on, and it's the easiest to learn to use for a learning curve, okay? The hot foiling products like the Gemini Foil Press, the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil, the Toto Machine, and also the um, Spellbinders Glimmer Machines, those are hot foils. Those have a little bit of a learning curve because you have to learn how to use the sandwiches. You have to learn how to use the stamping dies. You have to be able to line everything up without even being able to see it. So they have a learning curve. Yes, they have their purpose, but they are a little bit harder, in my opinion, and difficulty in learning how to use. So if you're going to start out with foiling, this is a very expensive hobby, as we all know. I would say... If you have a laminator in your closet, which most of us do, then you can start foiling with a laminator. Thank you, Pamela. I was just going to go into that. So Pamela said, is it better to buy a mink machine than a laminator? So let me tell you what the differences are. And I was going to buy four laminators to demonstrate them, but I didn't. There's many different laminator companies out on the market. So this Scotch machine has my maiden name on it. This machine is over 10 years old on it. Actually, my ex-married name, not my maiden name. <laughs> my ex-married name. This machine is over 10 years old. What you want to look for in a laminator is 3 and 5 milliliters. If it does not have dual heat setting, don't buy it. You need that 5 milliliter, which is a thicker setting, which is a hotter setting. Okay. From what I understand, the Amazon laminator is a good one. The swing line is a good one. Uh, Royal Sovereign is on the higher end of laminators, but it is also a good one. There are many Scotch laminators which are lesser expensive. Again, when you are looking at these laminators online, look for that 5 milliliter switch. Now, I have not tried the Glaminator, but I noticed the Glaminator had a laminating and a foiling button. So I'm assuming that one is 3 and one is 5. All this means is a higher heat setting for you. On the Mink machine... You already have those. Now, there's a mini mink and there's a large mink. By the way, I will link for you. I did see on Amazon somebody has a handful of the mini minks. They are the Heidi Swap mini minks. This is the Anna Griffin mini mink. Same machine. Millimeters. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Millimeters. Um, thank you, Stacy. So, the Anna Griffin machine, she now has gone to the Xyron Glaminator, which is a regular laminator. So she's not carrying the mink line anymore, but the mini mink and the large mink are the same. They're usually marketed by American Crafts, um, Crafts, Heidi Swap, and you have different heat settings. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, zero. So whether you're going to laminate or you're going to foil or you're gonna do flocking, there's all different surfaces you can use this on. Hi, Lita, and all different temperatures. So normally when I'm doing foiling, I have it on setting three. It will continue to blink until it's ready to go to that heat setting. You will feel heat coming off the machine, so you want to make sure I'm working on the Tim Holtz glass mat to keep my desk protected, but you want to make sure you have a surface that is going to be able to take that heat. The other difference is this machine has two sets of rollers. It has a roller at the top and a roller at the bottom. What they're going to do is simultaneously heat up and cause pressure on that foiler foil so it's going to push that foil into the toner sheets heat it up which is going to give you better foiling in a shorter period of time okay how do you get that on a laminator you you do a little more work with it so with a laminator generally laminators only have they have a push roller in the top, but the heating roller is usually on the bottom. This one actually is on the top. I can feel it. But usually, I can't take this apart, but usually 
laminators only have one roller that heats up and the other roller just feeds the paper through. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna feed the paper through and you want the higher setting. The key thing with the laminators, you wanna let it heat up for at least a half an hour. If the laminator is not hot enough, you're not going to get a good foil transfer, okay? So number one, know what kind of foils you're using. Number two, know what kind of machine you're using. There is thermal web flocking sheets, which has the adhesive built in. So I would say, no, don't use regular flocking. You want to use the deco foil thermal web flocking sheets, which again have built in adhesive. Okay. All right. So let's do a couple of examples of what happens and what doesn't happen when you're foiling. Let's see what we get here. Um, So I'm going to cut this. This image is pretty solid. I'm going to cut this in half and show you some differences here. Hi, Terry. And if I missed your questions, um, don't forget to ask again and I'll, I'll go back and read it. I'm trying to read as I'm demoing here. Okay. So the reason I picked this sheet is because... The second most common mistake that people make is they do not dust their their foiling um, their foiling before they do their foiling. Now I saw a video the other day on the laminator. In fact, I only felt, saw one video on the laminator, and the woman was very excited to have this machine, and she thought her foiling came out great. And upon pausing the video and looking at it, I thought it looked terrible. So I didn't buy the laminator, even though I wanted to show it, because I didn't feel like she she got the best foiling she could get out of it, like what I'm getting out of my mink machine. So I'm going to show you there's uh, two, two dusting products that I use. This one is on back order right now. Don't fret. She's getting them in stock, and she has a huge Black Friday sale going on. So that's next Friday, right? CreativeVisionStamps.com. This is called an Ultra Soft Foilables Duster. I keep mine stored in the bag, okay? The other thing I use, which I will link for you guys at the end of this video, is this Royal Soft Grip Brush. This is a, I think they call it a mop brush. I've had this brush forever. I use it for dusting off my glitters. But this is a great soft brush. Your enemy with foiling is always dust. Okay. So to make this fair, I'm going to cut two of the same colors of foil here. And I'm just going to grab. I have this uh, Heidi Swap Mink. Some kind of iridescent silver foil here. I have every color of the Heidi Swap full size mink. Yes, you can use regular paper, you can use parchment paper, you can use the mink carrier sheets, you can use any carrier sheet you want. I will link the mink carrier sheets. The mink carrier sheets come in a smaller 6x6 six six size. They also come in a full 12x12 12 12 size, which you can cut down. So here are the full 12x12 12 12 big bad boys here, which are full scrapbook size, which is where the larger mink comes in place. Um, the smaller carrier sheets, which you guys see me use all the time, they are these little guys here, which I think are six by six. I brought this up in a previous video. When you have excess foiling or toner stuck on there, that's normal. It's happen. It does happen. Um, you can use fingernail polish remover to get that off. Oh, I did not know that. Well, you can probably get this brush. So that's why I said there's two things that I... I use. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate without cleaning either of these off. I'm going to run one through the laminator and one through the mink just so you can see their quality should be pretty, pretty similar. This is like double taped here as I cut the foil. So I'm not going to, you guys have seen, if you have seen my videos or, or, or you can go back, I have a whole playlist on foiling. I'm not going to go through and tell you the difference between 
the different foils. Everybody knows I love Creative Vision Stamps foil. It's a thicker quality foil. To me, it just is easier to use. Just comes out a lot easier. So I think most everybody knows that about me. But, you know, it never hurts to try other products. And sometimes you can only get what you can get. So use what you have. That's what I say, right? Okay, so notice... I'm really not taking any care here and cutting the foil. I'm kind of just getting my fingers in everything. I'm just gonna cut this down as close as I can get. And I am not going to dust these pieces of foil off. I'm using the same toner sheet cut in half. And this is where most of us start off. Most of us say, okay, I got this foil, I got these toner sheets. I'm gonna stick it down and run it through my machine. Let's see what happens, right? Then we get the, oopsies, what did I do wrong? Why isn't it working? I can't get foiling to work. There must be some magic trick behind it. I want my money back. I'm never touching that machine again. It's gonna sit in the closet and get dusty. And then I watch one of Nancy's videos and I think, why is it so easy for her to do? <laughs> well, cause Nancy's addicted to foiling. All right, so. One piece of foil, notice, I didn't dust anything, right? One piece of toner sheet, one piece of foil, I'm going to run through mini mink on the other side of the desk here. <laughs> and then, thank you, Pamela, I get it a lot. People email me all the time. Okay, on this side, same piece of foil, same piece of toner sheet. Um, where's my other carrier sheet? I will say I do have better results using a carrier sheet than using cardstock or using parchment paper. The parchment paper eventually gets all warped and wrinkled up. The cardstock. Sometimes you need the cardstock for the pressure. Pressure, we'll see about that. But to be fair, <laughs> to, to be fair, I'm just gonna put both of them in the same Heidi Swap um, mink carrier folders, and I, I will link everything for you guys once we're done here. I wanted to do this live because I knew you guys would have questions of things I didn't think of. Okay, so I'm gonna put one through my laminator and one through my mink. Now when it comes to foiling, slow is better. This is not good for us impatient people who say, okay, I want it and I want it now. Hurry up, why can't I see it? So mistake number three, I have it as number six on my list, but I'm gonna cross, I'm gonna cross my little list off here, is not waiting for the foil to cool. So remember I said dust is your number one enemy. Not waiting for your foil to cool is another mistake people make. When you rip your foil right off, and I'm just gonna do this one because it just came out, and you peel it off, well in this case it worked because I used the mink. A lot of times what will happen is you will have missed spots because you don't allow the foil enough time to cool down and adhere to the toner. Okay, so most people would say, ooh, that's pretty good foiling. This one came out of the laminator. This one came out of the mink. What are you noticing very clearly on one of them versus the other one? It's on both of them, but it's much more evident on one than it is on the other one. Yes. The spots. Yep. Those spots are dust. Okay. That spots are dust. Okay. Now, clearly, this one was a little more dusty than this one was. In terms of shine and dullness, I think they're about the same. Coverage is actually pretty good on both of them, but I want to show you what the difference is if we can get rid of these spots, right? Even if we can't get rid of all the spots, if I can get this 
to look a little closer to this, I think most of us would be happy, right? But I like to try to get as much of that. Absolutely, the carrier dust holds, uh, the carrier sheets hold dust. There's three places you're going to get dust on your foil, on your project, and in your carrier sheets. So, because some of you guys can't get the ultra foilables duster, like I said, it is on back order right now. I'm just going to use the brush. Let me find another piece of toner sample here. I'm going to try to find a pretty solid layer that we can all look at. So storing your foil, storing your toner sheets is very important. If you don't store your foil inside little baggies or little um, pockets, if you don't store these guys in little baggies or pockets, they get dusty, they don't foil correctly. If the toner gets scratched off, they don't foil correctly. If your foils get damaged, they don't foil correctly. So it's very important to take care of them. They're dainty, they're delicate. If you treat your foil like this and it's thrown around in your desk and you're gonna go try to use it, well, all these Mylar foil particles now start to scratch off and you go to foil this, and I know it sounds kind of exaggerated here, great if you want the distress look. Not great if we're trying to get solid foiling, right? So you need to take care of your foil. We don't want it getting crumpled. We don't want it getting dusty. So you want to keep them in the containers they come in. You want to make sure that they're wrapped up nicely. When you're done cutting the piece that you need, you want to put it back where it belongs, okay? When you don't take care of your foil, your foil's not going to take care of you. And you're going to get spotty, scratched up results. Now, I also um, saw a video the other day that said use a craft cutter with foil. It will um, help your foil not get wrinkled. That's probably true. I just always use scissors. Um, but if you have a glass mat like this, you could use a craft knife and cut it. It's very difficult to cut with a trimmer, so I don't recommend using it to cut with a trimmer. Okay, so I'm going to do the same example here and cut this guy in half. All right, so same thing, and I'm going to cut this foil in half, but I'm going to dust it off this time, and we'll see how much better our results are. Dusting, dusting, dusting is the number one, if you take nothing else away, dust, 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 dust. Thank you, Kiki. All right, so I'm going to make a little room on the desk here a second. Kiki's my moderator tonight. So I'm going to start with this one. Just take my little brush, dust it off, try to get, you know, we have glitter, we have glue, we have embossing powders, we have scraps of paper, we have all kinds of things on there. The back of our foil, which is the dull side, not the pretty shiny side. You want to dust all that off? And then your toner sheet, you want to dust that off. Now, I see a speck right there on the, we'll see if it affects it or not. And I am kind of rushing through things here just to try to save time, but I hope you guys are just making note of some of the, the things I'm trying to get across here. Now, with the foilable sponge, you just wipe one time, so it is a little easier. So, one through the laminator, one through the mink, and hopefully these will have less black spots. We want to let this cool a second before we reveal it. See, the 
didn't get all the dust there, but still better than it was before. And I'll show you how to fix it. Let this cool down. Okay, so look at the difference between, this is the mink one, not dusting. We have one, two, three, a couple spots down here. So about five spots of dust. And then over here with dusting, we have, well, you know what? I think this, this is a defect in the foil here because of the way that it's lined up. That's not dust. But up here, I have a couple spots of dust. Okay, so, you know, the mink is always going to be a little bit better. I will say that because you're paying for it. It's specifically made for foiling. All right, so now let's look at the laminator. Still pretty good. Previously, a whole lot of spots. And then over here, just two spots that I missed. Now, how we fix that? We put a sentiment over it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You get a quickie glue pen. So either a zig two-way glue pen or a little quickie glue pen, and you put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, you set that aside and you let it dry. And we'll come back to fixing that. Uh, one of the questions I saw real quick is, can you let it cool too long? No, it doesn't hurt if you forget about it, you foil it and you forget about it. It's not gonna hurt anything, okay? How are we doing so far? You guys okay with questions? Just from the parking lot, how many shops at Academy Sports? I love technology. <laughs> Good for you, Cordelia. <laughs> uh, Stacy just got her order from Creative Vision Stamps. Awesome. Okay. All right. So I want to do. Um, I'm going to move my mink down to a lower setting. Actually, no. I'm going to move my mink to a higher setting, to five, just to demonstrate something. So that's blinking on five. So we want to make the mink super hot. And then I'm going to move the scotch laminator to three. So I want one to be too hot and one to be too cold. So we're going to give this a second to cool down. This one's already heat up. The other issues we have when people are foiling is what's called overfoiling and underfoiling. Overfoiling is when you have too much foil on your project. It means that either you had too much pressure or too much heat on your project. And nobody likes overfoiling because then you have to erase all of that and it just, it doesn't look pretty. So I'll grab another one of these toner sheets. And I'm trying to use the solid patterns so it's easier for you guys to see. And I don't want to waste any of my good foilables, so we're going to use these Heidi Swap cheapy ones. <laughs> it's the truth. I never lie to you guys. All right, this one's pretty good. just going to keep using this foil because I have like three rolls of it. So if you guys are okay with me using this foil. The clicking, the buzzing noises that you hear, all normal. And I have not had the need to buy a full size mink because I don't foil anything larger than card size. I believe this opening is six inches, which is more than enough for card size. Most of us are card makers You're doing these. Now, if you think you're gonna be doing scrapbook pages, then you may want a full size mink um, or a full size laminator. Uh, the laminator will do like an eight and a half, nine inch opening. Um, but honestly, if I, if, if I would ever foil anything that big, I could just get the laminator out. All 
All right, so we're going to dust. I'm going to use my little microfiber sponge here. I need like a real studio. Kelly, when you win that lottery, I want a studio. Like a real cameraman and stuff. So I'm going to open my carrier sheet. Okay. And again, one swipe out. And then the back side of the foil, we swipe. And our toner sheet, we swipe. So I'm going to, now my Scotch laminator says it's ready at three millimeters. So it's a lower heat setting that we would, than we would normally use. Here I'm going to try to demonstrate overfoiling and underfoiling. Mink is set to five, which is way too hot. Okay. All right, perfect. This did exactly what I wanted it to do. This is underfoiling. This is what you're going to get out of most inexpensive laminators out there, out of low quality toner sheets that are not printed with enough toner, um, which is why most people don't print from home because their laser printer cannot print enough quality. And when you're using too little heat and when you reveal your foil too quickly, this is what will happen. This is called underfoiling. So great if you want that distressed look, but you paid for the foil, you paid for the... Um, the the foil sheets, the toner sheets. So this is underfoiling. This happens when, again, not a good quality toner, not a good quality um, print, too little heat, too fast of heat, revealing the foil too quickly. So this is underfoiling. No one wants that. The only way you can try to fix this is to attempt to line this back up and foil it again in my opinion that really never works because once this toner has been heated up it's very difficult to get it to re-adhere again so you can try that um, but it usually doesn't work okay now on the other end of the spectrum is over foiling over foiling is it's too hot so we'll see if the mink did what we want it to do over here yep so Overfoiling is everything gets foiled. You can see there's a lot of missed spots here, and it's just, it's really bad. The foil is actually flaking off. Overfoiling is foiling just gets everywhere. It's not good quality. Again, that the um, toner is heated up too high, way past where it should be heated up, and so the foil just kind of sticks everywhere, and it looks awful. Okay, so you want to make sure you have the right setting, the right shims, the right timers. So I'm going to change our Scotch laminator back to five. By the way, both machines have a release switch, which is right here. So if something goes through the machine and it starts to eat it, which does happen, um, you want to press that release switch. I have a release switch on the back of my mink here. Basically, what it does is it opens your rollers so that you have enough time to pull out whatever's getting eaten. Okay, so I'm changing this back to three. I'm changing the scotch back to five where it belongs. And what was I going to demonstrate this time? Oh, I wanted to demonstrate the difference in pressure by using, instead of the mink carrier sheets, I have a piece of heavy cardstock. This is not cheapy cardstock. Heavy cardstock folded in half. I don't know if I have a piece of parchment paper. Hold on. I may have parchment paper that may have come in. Sometimes it comes in like with the deco foil packs. Let me see. This is a Gina K one. Nope, no parchment paper. Sometimes 
um, when you buy some of the some of the deco foil products, they come with uh, parchment paper. But you know, just go up to your kitchen pantry and grab a piece of parchment paper. Not wax paper. Do not ever use wax paper unless you want to destroy your machine. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not ever use wax paper. Okay, so I don't have a piece of parchment paper in front of me right now. So we're just going to use this piece of heavy-duty cardstock. So let me grab another piece of our fancy stuff here. a little foilable one. Now, I will plug Creative Vision stamps just because I do love their stuff, and you guys know that. So with Creative Vision stamps foil, you get 25 feet of foil. It's very easy to cut. It comes in these rolls. So it keeps it from getting damaged, marred, scratched. Um, it's very good quality foil. And again, the big thing that I like is you get 25 feet of it. So in this hobby of ours where we spend way too much money and then we end up hoarding our products because we spent so much money on pretty paper and pretty foil and then we don't want to give it to anybody, it's our precious. Well, when you have 25 feet of foil, guess what? You can afford to make stuff and you can afford to give it away. So use it. All right, so I'm going to put my folded piece of cardstock here. Dust once. I'm going to take the back side of the foil. Dust once. Put that over it. Piece of dust right there. All right, we're going to go through, well, is this ready? Not ready yet. This is ready. All right, we're going to start with the laminator because it's ready. You can use copy paper. You can use parchment paper. I just have thick cardstock because I feel like it provides a shim as well as a carrier sheet. You want that carrier sheet so that your um, toner sheets don't get eaten by the rollers inside the machine. Done. We're going to give that a second to cool down. This green is called Shamrock Envy, which is a nice green. And this is uh, traditional red, which is called Ruby Slippers. This, this foil is just less prone to crinkling, wrinkling getting beat up it's just much better quality it really is it's like when you find a good stamp company or good ink company okay so I'm going to take this out of our sheet and I can tell you that did not foil well just from looking at the outside of it okay so this is the other one still blinking so this may not be hot enough all right so we're going to reveal this i can tell already that this did not heat up enough and didn't foil enough we're going to have under foiling here it didn't foil at all <laughs> okay let's go back to the carrier sheet that was a big waste 
didn't do anything. Uh, yes, Barbara and Irene, correct. I, I, sorry, I've tried the Heidi Swap. I've tried, um, other companies are out there, and Creative Vision Stamps is just the best quality when it comes to toner sheets. Now, here is a perfect example. We used the Mink machine on layer three with the same heavy cardstock, same foil. And it foiled beautifully. Look at all that beautiful red foil. Just from using the Mink. So now we went back through the laminator, back at five, and that worked using the Heidi Swap Mink Carrier Sheets. So we have one in red, one in green. I'll be able to use these for Christmas cards. Now this one does have a spot of dust there. Oh, it didn't foil here on the end. Totally missed foiling there on the end. Whoopsie. Okay. So I would recommend from one foiling attic to another. If you are just beginning this hobby, you don't know if this is something you're going to want to do or not, start with your laminator. You already have this in your closet. You can buy a laminator for $20. It's very inexpensive. Okay. Start with the color of foils you think you're going to use. Black Friday's coming up. Creative Vision Stamps is going to have... She, Irene, she does when you go to her shows. Um, I think they may be done traveling for the year. But um, she's going to have these on sale. Check out her website. Normally, these are $12. I want to say they're going to be $8. The specialty foils, so like the prismatic foils, like here's like, um, this one's called Crystal Ballroom. This is like a shattered effect. It is normally $14. It's going to be like $10 and so on. These are going to be cheaper. So the foil is going to be cheaper. Just buy one or two. You don't have to buy a whole bunch. You buy one or two. Her foilable sheets, and again, I only showed you guys some of them of the many that I have, and I don't even have all of them. I'm trying to move all of this stuff out of the way here. Oh yeah, good point. Remind me about that foil fix again. Um, but you can buy these little card size ones. You get six of these. They Again, mine are from stamp shows, so I don't know if there's been a price increase or not, but I think they're around the same price. Um, full sheet of foilable sol solid toner sheets, and these are all things I bought at last year's stamp show. Um, you can buy sentiments, you can buy backgrounds, and I say start with a pack of backgrounds, start with birthday sentiments because everybody makes birthday cards, okay? You have birthday sentiments here, you have backgrounds, you have tags, here's some more tags, here's some more birthday sentiments. I mean, there's a whole bunch for Christmas. Start, start simple. Okay, start with a, if you want to try this product out, start with something simple. Don't jump in and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Hi, D. You know, now, now you're somebody who's a little more advanced. I think I can handle this. I like making an investment. Get yourself a mini mink. It's totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. And I just ordered, I don't have them. They should be in my hands next week. The brand new Brutus Monroe Deco Foil. Um, he did um, a collaboration. Uh, I bought some Christmas ones, but they are on the clear toner sheets. So, hi, Uli. So, I'm hoping to get those next week, and we'll see how they, they do. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Where's, where's our little boo-boo mistake we were going to fix here? And if you didn't watch yesterday's video, we're going to keep all of these scraps of foil because we can reuse these. Even the crumpled one we can reuse. So all of these scraps of foil, we keep these.
And then I save these and I put them in a little like pre-made bucket of, okay, well I have these backgrounds made or have some sentiments foiled. What, you know, what do I want to stick them on? And what's nice is you can customize this. You have a masculine card, you want to use masculine colors, go ahead. You want to use feminine colors, go ahead. You do whatever you want. If you want to use your football team's colors, go Steelers, you go ahead and put that in some black and gold. I saw a mini mink. I'll link, I'll link the Amazon link, and I think it was $39.99. I was very tempted to buy it at $39.99. Yeah, parchment paper I don't like because it does wrinkle. I agree with you, Stephanie. These, this two-pack of mink folders is like five, six dollars, guys. And I use them all the time. And when they get used like this, it's like our acrylic box blocks. Do you know how your acrylic blocks are loved? Because they have ink all over them. Mine don't because I clean them. It's the same thing with your foil transfer folders. Oh my gosh, they have foil and toner on them. Guess what? That means you're using them. That's fine. It's going to happen. Take a little acetone and clean it off. These are great. And like I said, I think they come in a two-pack. Um, and they're they're five or six dollars. I'll link I'll link everything for you guys. The only thing that's on back order right now that I know of um, are these ultra soft foilables duster. Like I said, next Friday's Black Friday. She's having a sale on all of her stamps, her foils, her foilables. So take advantage. Oh, 76 li 75 people watching. We have 18 thumbs up. Kiki, do you want to give the directions on how to do the thumbs up again? Because you got to go out and you got to go to your name. Um, that's a possibility, but I think for the most part, if the toner sheets are protected, they should work. If they're kept, if they're kept in plastic baggies, they should work. Um, I don't know that they necessarily go bad. You do not want to expose these to heat. You do not want to expose um, them to humidity. You want to keep that up. Okay, so to give a thumbs up, you're going to close your chat, do thumbs up next to live chat. Yes, Irene, I'll link all of the links for you. Thank you for so much for thinking about me. Where did I put the one that we were going to refoil? Oh, I stuck glue to it. <laughs> I forgot about it. Well, that's okay. It only takes a second to fix it. It was this one. So what you would do is you would put the quickie glue pen down and then take your corner of your foil and stick it back down. But I think I put paper over this so it didn't work. So we'll have to try it again. This time I'll leave it out so I remember. And honestly, most people aren't going to notice when you have these spots. But it's so much easier when you can just camouflage it and not have to worry about it. 36 likes. Woo! Barbara, I have. Um, so I just did this one. You know what? We'll, we'll do it again right now. So the problem I had with these before was that... A foil flaked off of them. Now it could be the delicate nature of this foil mate. Let me see what other Gina K ones I have. I think those are the only ones I have. But hold on. Let me look in my wondrous box of many foils. Hold on a second. Wow, 41 thumbs up. You guys are awesome. Oh, oh, I have a job update. Had a very good interview today. I have a second interview tomorrow. It's actually something that I'm very interested in. I talked to a few of my friends who are in this field. They gave me the thumbs up. So um, I will let you guys know. Jinxing it, Kiki. Why are you jinxing it, Kiki? Oh, so I will say these Heidi are these. Uh, oh, there's another carrier sheet. These that came with the mink machine from Anna Griffin. I'm uh, not so good. Not so good. 
these were kind of meh. So that's why they're still in these packages. And I love Anna Griffin stuff, but these, these are just not good. Now, somebody asked in the very beginning about the Glaminator. I looked into it. I don't think I would invest in that because there's too many other products out on the market that are way more established with foiling. Aha. Uh -huh. um, that I think you'd be better off with, honestly. I think the Glaminator, in my opinion, now if they want to send me one to try out, hey, no problem, I'll try it out for them. Um, but I don't know that I would invest my money in a $100 laminator. And that's what it was when I saw it on HSN. All right, so here's a Gina K Foil Mates one. Let's try this out and see if I get any better results. Someone told me I have to have it on heat setting four. So we'll do a little experiment here. Let me move my little scraps out of the way. I'm also going to move my laminator out of the way because I really want to use, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt and I want to use the mink. So I'm going to move this bad boy out of the way and I'm going to speed it up here because we are going way past time. But I appreciate everybody participating. You all get thumbs up for participating. All right, one of the things I did complain about on the full size one is that it has white edges. That drives me nuts. It should be edge to edge. Okay, so that drives me nuts. The second problem I had was my foil flaked off. That was the other thing that bothered me. I'm trying to leave this out so I don't forget to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one of these half foil mates, which does go ed edge to edge. Somebody online told me you have to do the Gina K at a higher setting. So I have uh, the mink on setting four. Okay. And to be fair, should we do... See, I don't know if it's the foilables or their foil. That's the other question. We kind of have to do two experiments here. One with the foilable and one with the foil, right? Because if it's the foil, that's a different story. So that's what we'll do. Does that make sense? Okay. So I cut this one in half. I cut this one in half. And we'll do one at setting three and one at setting four. Right? Right. Okay. I have care sheet. Thank you, Sue. Yeah, I wasn't the only one, Pamela, when I went asked. I was like, hey, what's up with this? Is it my foil? Is it my foil sheets? And somebody said, oh, you have to use those at a higher setting. That's just how they are. And I was just like, oh, okay. But honestly, I was like, I'm not going to use them if they're not going to come out good. All right, so let me get this out of the way before I forget. So just taking a little piece of foil, that glue is now dried. It's supposed to stick on there. <laughs> Maybe my spot's too big. Oh, my glue peeled off. Well, you guys have seen me do this a million times. Ideally, the glue sticks and then the foil sticks to the glue and it fixes it. I think my spots were too big this time. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. But you guys have seen me do that. All right, so test number one, I am going to use different foils, okay? Test number one, I'm gonna use different foils. I am going to use Where's that pretty blue foil? We are going to use a piece of this Gina K Brilliant Blue Fancy Foil. Another complaint I had was I hate that it's in sheets because now 
I'm going to have to cut this down to the right size and I'm going to have all this excess foil left over, which drives me nuts. Where if it's on a roll, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, there's less waste if it's on a roll. That's just my two cents. Okay, so. Dusting, dusting. This is the Gina K Fancy Foils in Brilliant Blue. And I am not anti-Gina K. I am in love with those glitter gels. Oh my God, I bought all of them. Love, 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 love them. Gina K, need more glitter gels colors. More, more, more. I will buy every single one of those. But these guys, the little foil mates are driving me nuts. All right, so then we need another color. We have our Creative Vision Stamps Sailor, Hello Sailor in that same color blue. Well, it's a darker blue, but you know what I mean. We're gonna let this come out and cool. And we, we are doing these at setting three, so. We will determine, in this case, if it is the foils. Thank you, Barbara. Anything I can do to help you guys and save you guys money, that's what I'm here for. I like this one might be too big. That's okay. We'll get a little bit excess there. That's all right. Okay, so setting three, Creative Vision Stamps foil. Same um, heat setting, same foilables transfer sheet. Okay, trying to be fair here. <laughs> Pam says, maybe it's the foiling that didn't work out for me, but maybe I didn't know what I was doing. Hey, Pam, we all, we all, it's a learning curve. It is a lot of trial and error and a lot of money. That's why I said if you're just starting out, you don't you don't you want to buy the best stuff. You don't want to spend your money. We all did it. We all bought the crappy silicone stamps. We all bought the crappy cheap inks from Michaels, right? And then we found out later on that's not worth my money. It's not worth my time when I can buy good stamps from good companies. Okay, this is setting three. I feel like this is overfoiled. We're going to let it cool. Okay. This is the Gina K. Now this one foiled perfectly. I don't see any lifting. You really got to get in there and look close. I don't see any dust. And it's just very pretty. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, I don't see any flaking up. Oh, there's a couple dust spots over here, but you can't see it's camouflaged. Yeah, there's one, there's a couple dust spots over here. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Now that I got my eyeballs on it here, 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 here. Wow. There's a lot the spots. Uh, okay. Maybe it's just camouflage better on that one. Okay, this is using the Creative Vision Stamps foil. Let me get my eyeballs in here. Now there's a little flaking right there. I don't see any dust spots though, and I'm really putting my eyeball in there. I know this is probably way too close for you guys. I'm sorry. I don't see any dust spots, so uh, I would say Creative Vision Stamps wins when it comes to the foil. Like there's, it's pretty good. Just that one spot had a little bit of flaking, but it was just overfoiled and it came right off. 
So I don't know, that looks pretty good. So I don't think it's the temperature because the Creative Vision stamp foil st stayed on okay. But you can't see it with the Gina K because it's so uh, iridescent with all that sparkle and glitter in there. You can't see those black spots. There you can see them. Can you see when I, when I have the light on there, you can see the black spots. So they're all up here. Okay. Let's move the machine to setting four. We'll do the same exact experiment. We're gonna use these more little delicate snowflakes, which I love the look of them. They just don't foil well for me. Yes, Terry, I am picky. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stephanie, I don't, I don't know if I linked it in the last video. I'll put the link back on for you guys. I am picky, Terry, because I want it to look good. I want my friends to think, wow, did Nancy make this or did she go buy it? And when I say I made it, watch my videos. again with our little snowflakes higher heat setting dusting off the carrier sheet dusting off the Gina K sparkling brilliant blue foil dusting off this Gina K foil mate Yeah, I know it's not going to go all the way across, but I'm not going to cut another piece of foil for that. Okay, number four. Hello, Fran! Yay, welcome, Fran! Just dusting off over here while we're waiting for that one to go through. Terry, I want you to spend eight hours making me one of those Santa Claus cards. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so this one's all been dusted. So we'll see if the different heat setting makes a difference. So Sharon, you can do that. I found it really doesn't make that much of a difference because once that toner has been um, heated up, it's been activated, um, it doesn't like reactivate. So you can try to do that, um, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Okay, so we've been letting this one cool. You could use a Swiffer, sure. Still pretty. Let me get my eagle eyes on it. Um, still some spots where the foil didn't completely adhere. Again, you're not gonna notice it. It's probably less, definitely less noticeable than on the other setting. Um, like the foil's not flaking. The other day when I did it, the foil was flaking on the edges and it really was driving me nuts. But there's a black spot. There, 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 or here. 
So some tiny, tiny spots that didn't foil. But I think much better on setting four. So whoever suggested that, setting four does seem to be a little better than setting three for the Gina K. Let's see how Creative Vision Stamps did. I am not seeing one single flaw. Oh, there's a tiny one right on the edge of that little scroll there. I'm really eyeballing this, guys. So I would say overall, I don't know. My opinion's always been Creative Vision Stamps is just better. It's better foil. It's better quality foil foilables sheets um the gina k has some nice designs clearly i buy gina k or you guys wouldn't see it so again i'm not totally against it um but i just think the foil, if you are just starting out and it's just starting to invest put your money in with creative vision stamps it's a better investment you get a lot more it's better quality um that's just my opinion of it i mean i think these are gorgeous designs and it may be just because these are so intricate um but I just think you get more for your money. You get a bigger bang for your buck when it comes to foiling with the Creative Vision Stamps foil. And she's having the Black Friday sale. I saw that posted on her Facebook page. So I posted it as well for you guys if you want to check that out. But you got to have good quality tools. You got to have some patience. Um, you know, we've been on here for over an hour. You guys watching me foiling. It's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying to watch the reveals. A lot of great foiling companies out there. I have... Every single color of Creative Vision stamps, I have a ton of mink foil. And I know I focused more on the mink and toner foil today than the other hot foiling problems. There is a whole playlist on foiling, and I break it down by Gemini Foil Press as well. So if you want more information on that, I can do that video another day. Um, but this, I feel, is the easier way to foil and make things look really pretty and stand out. Um, versus doing the hot foiling. The hot foiling does take a lot of practice, takes a lot of work, and it's more of an investment because now you have to buy special foil, special machine, special dyes. And with mink foil or toner foiling, you don't have to do that. So we had a lot of fun today checking out a lot of things. We learned about underfoiling, we learned about overfoiling, we learned about dust, we learned about the difference between a mink machine and a laminator. We learned about the differences in foil. So hopefully you guys take away something from this. And again, I appreciate your thumbs up. There's 45 thumbs up right now. If you miss this video and you're catching the playback, you can post your comments down below. I do read all the comments. I do answer the comments. If you want to ask me a question privately, you can email me at nancystamps15 at gmail.com. And I want to thank everybody for hanging out and sticking with me. I will link everything in the description down below. There will be some Amazon links on there. I do get a little bit of a commission if you click on the Amazon link. Um, I lost Arteza. They said we just weren't getting enough clicks on the link. So Arteza is not going to be sending me any more products. Um, so that's fine. Um, you still may see me use their products because I do like their products. But any of the Amazon links that you guys can use, I do appreciate that. There's no extra charge for you guys. So thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate your thumbs up. I appreciate you guys are so awesome. Have a great weekend. Maybe Leah and I will pop on and do a video tomorrow for you guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. 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 Adios. Anigaseo. Auf Wiedersehen. Mm-hmm. <laughs>